things up, but trust me, the internet is the wrong kind of spice. This Thanksgiving, oh, from Disney, here we go, family-friendly fan sites. That sounds safe. Hi. What the? Ralph breaks the internet. Wait, are you guys okay? Can I call the police? Rated PG, November 21st. Okay, so um, this is Adolf Vega, and uh, with me is Jake Jarvis. And this is going to be the spoiler field review of Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck-It Ralph 2. So, if you have not seen this movie and do not want to get the entire movie spoiled, you best leave now before you ruin the movie for you. Because we're going all into this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, go listen to the spoiler-free uh, podcast. Then go see the movie. Then come back. We'll be here. Yeah, you can just pause this podcast. You don't have to throw it away. You don't have to, you know, <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you can have favorite it, you know? Yeah. Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. All right. I'm getting into this movie. The movie starts off with, um, you know, Ralph and Vanessa. I hate how they do the name, and it's unique, but it's kind of hard to pronounce. <laughs> and mm-hmm. like, Vanessa B is like, oh man, I'm you know I'm tired of the same old same old, which understandable. They do say that they have like three games, or three levels in the Sugar Rush thing, and Ralph is like, oh, I'll help you out. So he goes in there and like wrecks the level to create a new, I guess, uh, shortcut, and like he doesn't really tell her until he's there, and like. She's going on there, and um, one of the kids is playing it, and then they go there, um, and they lose control of the driving, and, like, it looks like Vanellope is right. driving it, yes. and the player wants to take back control and break the wheel of the um, arcade unit, and now they have to, you know, put the game machine down because... They need the part, and the part is like two hundred dollars, and it costs more than the machines worth. So they're going to come pick it up in a couple of days to take it to salvage because they can't really fix it and they can't replay really it. So that's an existential crisis for Penelope that she may not have a home unit to you know go to, and all the characters need to get out of there before they unplug it and it's gone for good in theory. Mm-hmm. And um, now the part that was kind of weird is that it's like, wait, could Vanetta be control the game when she's no one else is playing, like actual there, or is I thought they would just not be able to control anything, like they only have free will when no one's there. That kind of threw me. I think you're thinking on a level that they never even considered okay. for this. No, I'm serious. I don't think they considered that at all because that is a good question can Penelope or Ralph well Ralph sort of took control whenever he felt like it in the first movie so I guess if, Penel- if Penelope became strong enough willed she might be able to too so you okay. know yeah that that kind of threw me off at first but that's small potato um, so they go back to the, you know, the surge protector and they're trying to figure out what's happening, what's going to happen to everyone. And then, you know, they, the other racers are like, Hey, you know, thanks for screwing up the game, you know, Ralph. And, you know, Vanetta is like, Hey, you know, you screw this up too. And like, well, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out, you know, and the, uh, um, the other racers now they actually are talking to other characters and like, so, can you come to my game? Can we take care of y'all? And it becomes like a meta, um, I guess not really a meta, but like a conversation on like evacuees <laughs> and, you know, very, a refugee. Yeah, like a very light way, but like, you know, 
it's one of those things that's like if you were a kid, you would not have seen that. But as an adult, you're like, yeah, totally, this is a refugee problem. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and adoption. There's a yeah. Felix, Felix and his uh, wife. If you've seen the first movie, you know who he married. Uh, and they adopt all the sugar uh, rush uh, races. And that was it's really interesting, you know, I think, okay, <laughs> um, I guess that makes sense. And then, like, they're, like, a tapper, and I'm just trying to figure out things. And, like, and then the guy comes in, and, like, um, the, I guess the owner, I don't know, he's just, like, the manager, gets the Wi-Fi, and then they plug it in. And um, <laughs> it's funny that they use, like, a, you know, 2000 iMac. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know Wi-Fi, you know router that's probably again twenty years old, but fine. Uh, you know? Most people I know who set up Wi-Fi always use a spare computer. They don't put it on their main computer, and then they gripe about why the Wi-Fi is so slow. So, you know that's um, I laugh figure- because that's something I've noticed a lot of people do. Hey, I'm guilty of it, too. So, uh, of course, I'm not the most technologically uh, advanced person. I'm about one step from being a Luddite, so. So there were a lot of little things like that, the little dumb things that people do with technology that I that I noticed in this movie that made me chuckle. So, yeah, they go onto the Internet. Or, you know, they weren't supposed to go over there, but they found a way to do it. And, um, you know, they're they like, oh, we have to go to eBay because that's where you can get the um, new wheel, and it costs $200, which was just completely unfair, you know, because it is like a – they did say that the manufacturer doesn't work anymore and that it is an older game at this point, so – you know, you can't just put any kind of wheel onto it, you know? So that was well, believable. Mm-hmm. Now, the starting bid at $200 seemed kind of high, but okay. <laughs> okay. I've never bought a wheel for uh, an old video game, so I don't know how, uh, how expensive an arcade uh, part for an old arcade game would be. But they it ended up being a lot more than two hundred because Penelope and Ralph do not understand uh that the internet this was not a game, this was real, and they ended up bidding against themselves. Which is actually a really and, funny thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is something I could act I've never done anything like this, but I could but I know people who have. Because they don't understand how the internet works and stuff. In fact, this movie is perfect for uh, kids to take their grandparents to, to show them how the internet works. Well, how the internet works in this movie is funny and it's broken. It's not at all how the internet works. Well, <laughs> it's, but, yeah. it's, it's, it's close enough You're gonna un- they're going to understand stuff. It doesn't, it, it's not exact, but they'll understand stuff. So this, so they end up with this $200 wheel ends up being almost a quarter of a million bucks. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they have 24 hours to make that amount of money. Which is insane. Because if anybody's ever went nuts bidding on eBay, eBay wants their money in a timely manner. Now, I always kind of thought that eBay was on the way out. Like, it was, like, almost dead for, like, years now. Are they, like, really still relevant now? Uh, They might be now. <laughs> Probably why they are in this movie. I I mean, this is... This is uh, basically 90 minutes of, of Internet company advertising wrapped up in a, in a really interesting story. So this, might, uh, this movie might save eBay's ass. Because, honestly, though, Amazon just destroyed eBay. <laughs> oh, Amazon's destroying everything. Uh, I mean. Yeah. So it's one of those things where 
like, okay, you're not, you know, Amazon is like number one, one. And eBay is like seven. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. I figure and, eventually we're going to have a war. Amazon's going to own half the planet and Google's going to own the other half. And, <laughs> we'll get, and they'll go to war. So, yeah. It's like, okay, how do we make money? And then they find a spammer. And the spammer's like, oh, make money off of video games. Playing games. Mm-hmm. And the way they actually framed it, it was actually really clever. That they're like, oh, you know, different people want to farm parts for a game. So if you come mm-hmm. into our game and, you know, and farm that part, you know, you can sell that part and then do it. And that actually makes sense because there is legitimate people that don't want to play a game that they'll pay to farm a part or a thing and they'll pay real money instead of uh, doing it themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, South Koreans seem to be the ones that really do that. A lot of Asian cultures Asian countries really have no problem paying real money for in-game content, like huge amounts of money. Like, you know, they'll pay you like $100 for like 50 gold or something. Ridiculous, you know. And like a lot of people, I don't, I would never, ever do that. But, you know, some people don't have that time that they want, they want to make sure that they want that thing now and not, you know. So, mm-hmm. like, they go into this um, car racing game, which um, the rules of that game doesn't make any sense to me, but fine. <laughs> People go online, play, and they're trying to take away, like, the main person's car. And um, it's like a super violent kind of car racing game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Slaughter Race. By way of uh, Grand Theft Auto meets uh, the Fast and the Furious franchise. And, like, Gal Gadot is the main character in this. Um, and what do you think of mm-hmm. her in this movie? Uh, she was more uh, Wonder Woman than she was her character in Fast and the Furious, which was interesting. Also made it better. Yeah. Um, like, she didn't feel like she was really stretching and changing that much. You know, just kind of, it didn't feel like a character. Just felt like her talking line, you know, kind of thing. It wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. It just didn't really feel distinct, you know. Like, yeah. You know, Vanellope, which is played by um, Sarah Silverman. Yeah, Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman is definitely playing a actor or a character in this, and how she sounds like in movies and TV shows is not at all really like how. Using this, obviously, she's much more R-rated than a PG movie like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of times where Sarah Silverman even goes too far for me. <laughs> um, but she plays Shank, which is a weird name yep. for a character, but okay. And then Ralph does something. Go ahead. Oh, at first I thought they said. Uh... God, what's the word I'm thinking of? Not shank. shank. Originally, no. I thought they said, uh, God, I'm trying to remember. It's a, it's a, it's a light slur for women. But then when I heard it was shank, I was like, okay. Skank. <laughs> I thought they, at first they called her skank, and I was like, what? Yeah. And then, like, Raph does, like, gets mad at them and is like, hey, we need to do this, and then has, like, a city thing, and then they, they, in-game, post that video onto BuzzTube, which is a combination of YouTube and BuzzFeed. Mm-hmm. And then that gets a lot of views. And they're like, oh, yeah, you got to talk to the head person at BuzzFeed, BuzzFood, BuzzTube, and she'll hook you up, and she'll help you make money so you can buy the thing. And yeah. They kind of give up with the spamming stuff. <laughs> it's just like, okay, whatever. And um, they go over there, and they're like, oh, yeah, look at all the hearts I have. Everyone really liking that video. And, yeah, you should do more of these, you know, Ralph, and just totally have fun with it, and people are really going to dig it. Which leads to, you know, several really funny scenes where he's going different, doing different things and stuff. Yeah, and they really nailed all the crap with uh, BuzzFeed uh, perfect. 
Yeah, and, um, you know, just Internet culture and what makes things funny on the Internet and, you know, just stupid jokes and stuff that work. Now, one of the things here that kind of the amount of time this movie played with was really strange. Like, they said they had 24 hours, and, like, it was hard to tell how much time has passed, you know, in the real world. Yeah. And one problem where I had it where I was like, okay, if Ralph is doing all these things, okay, sure. I mean, I don't know how an in-game video game character has her own phone that she could access and post a video of. That's kind of super meta. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, okay. So if other people are, are, you know, really excited about Ralph, wouldn't that arcade unit where he came from be really popular and then they cut back to the arcade and Ralph's not there? Yeah. That yeah, like that's a massive good. plot hole. Yeah. And they didn't establish whether internet time is different than uh in in real life time. So don't know. Um, yeah, and like Felix said, Oh, I'll take care of things while you're gone which doesn't make sense because he can't take care of things, you know. The game is fundamentally the two players, you know, Ralph wrecking things and Felix fixing things. So he can't mm-hmm. take care of it. And then um you know, Vanellope was like, oh, I, I kind of want to stay in this game. This game is so much fun. And, you know, she started doing a job where she was working for BuzzTube and going to different people and getting the pop-up ads to, you know, lure them into there and get more hearts because more hearts equals actual money, which that thought, I thought that was very flimsy. I was like, okay, I get what they're trying to do here, but that will make sense, you know. <laughs> It's because you, you get hearts doesn't necessarily mean you get money, you know. I know they're simplifying it, but at the same time, it's, the amount of money he needed to make in 24 hours, the amount of stuff he did, it just didn't seem like that could make sense. Well, it depends. Uh, cause some of these viral videos, like Chewbacca's uh, mom, which they made a joke about Chewbacca's dad, uh, some of these things have racked up 6 million views in a few hours. So, yeah, they could do it. They just, but they did play fast and loose and didn't explain to us what the monetary exchange rate for a like is, the actual U.S. currency. And yeah, I noticed I'm, they didn't take on Bitcoin or anything like that, really. <laughs> and that actually would have made more sense to actually yeah. go to Bitcoin instead of U.S. dollars because yeah. the... Um, you know, the currency, like, you don't have a bank. Like, Ralph doesn't have a Chase account or something. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he can't just get the money and here you go. Wait, you don't have an account. Oh, you don't have an eBay account. No, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, how did he bid without an eBay account? <laughs> and, um, so, okay, fine, whatever. And, Oh, he might have been able to do it as a guest, but then they wouldn't know who he was, so he could run like hell when he didn't have the money. Yeah. So, then, um, you know, the internet yes woman, she was like, oh, yeah, Vanellope should go to that Disney place. Yeah, that would be a really good place to get things. So, they go there, and then she meets the princesses after they kind of... It was kind of weird because, like, they had problems with her giving out pop-up ads in there, which didn't Mm -hmm. seem like, why would they really care, you know? But, like, how they did the um, quiz, you know, which princess you are, I thought that was really funny and really well done. Uh Uh-huh. Because anybody who's ever spent any time on Facebook has come across these stupid quizzes. Yeah, and then BuzzFeed was the one that basically almost really popularized it, you know. Uh-huh, and clickbait. Yeah, and, you know, they do have some good commentary with clickbait um, and, and doing that. And so then, you know, they actually get to meet the princesses. And I was really worried that they were going to overexposure them or the, the gag would run its course. And it worked perfectly. I was stunned how well it did. Mm-hmm. 
And I was very impressed with how they took uh the I mean, several of the modern princesses they didn't really mess with. But it was really nice to see reimaginings of like Snow White and Sleeping Beauty because they were done in two dimensional uh traditional cell animation and they really did a good job transferring them over into three D animation. Now um and, I don't go ahead. And I would, and I also like the little bit about, uh, yeah, a princess knows what her wishes are because she'll start singing about it. Yeah, that was really funny. I was really, now, that song you know, he did, I thought was bad. <laughs> um, it wasn't, I think it was supposed to be bad because Penelope's got this very off-putting voice. Yeah. And, um, and it was, uh, Alan, I mean, Alan Merchant just farted that song out. Because it was just a, a, a mismatch, hodgepodge of all of his other uh, music that he's done for various Disney uh, films. So, did all the voice actresses come back? Because it didn't sound like all of them came back for this film. A lot of them, well, obviously, several didn't because. To several of the older ones, like like Snow White and Sleeping Beauty, have passed on, but several of them were credited as being there. They okay, have, I sure. I, one of the biggest things gags they really missed in the princess is when they get a knock on the door, and then it's C three PO. My first mm-hmm. thought was, this is the Disney princesses. It should have been Princess Leia that answered at the door. Yeah. She should yeah. have been at the door. That would have been I nice know they would Yeah. I know they would have to recast the voice, but Billy Lord uh would have done it in a heartbeat. And the actress who played uh young Princess Leia in uh Rogue One could have done it too. So that yeah. would have been a nice that would have been a nice touch and 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 remind people, you know, she is a princess. Yeah, and, um, you know, they, I did see Stan Lee in the crowd, and that made me sad and happy at the same time, you know. Yeah. Oh, I like the way they did avatars here. They made uh, people look like uh, Funko Pop when they're walking around the Internet. Yeah, like they have, like, avatars, like if they're, like, Nintendo Mii's. But they're like, the, you know, that was like who they were. The people, acting mm-hmm. human beings online, were using mm-hmm. those avatars, which I don't know if they knew about or not. But fine, That's probably the they, not. Yeah. They probably didn't because when they would something would happen to them online, you know, in the internet, and they get yeah. back, the, the lost connection. You'd see the person, come on, you know, griping about so. I don't think I'm ever going to, every time I get a blue screen of death, I'm going to wonder what happened to my avatar on the internet. So, uh, you know, uh, Ralph gets his, gets the actual amount of money they need, and, um, you know, which is all fast and loose, and then he sees, like, the comment section, and the comment section, like, rip him apart, and he feels really bad. Um, wow, it's funny, because um, the review... We actually do have comments on, on the, our review, Jake. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, and never read them. No, no. I, I haven't actually, read it. Yeah, I haven't read Internet comments since the 90s. So, um, in the 3D version, okay. When I watched it, I wrote the review for the written part, and Jake wrote the review for the 3D part. And there was about a day where we didn't have a 3D part. Um, so I cleverly, I, I thought it was clever, put on there that Ralph wrecked the web page and the 3D section has been corrupted and we'll try to get it fixed as a way, as an excuse to why there's no 3D section. And <laughs> okay, that's hilarious. I should have read I, that. I, I thought that was a clever way of doing it. Mm-hmm. And... The, the, this guy said, um, good film review, but I want to hear about the 3D review. Not a reference to the movie. Can you fix that, please? So, um, 
the guy said, yes, I updated it and now it has a 3D section. Apparently, that's today. I thank you for acting quickly, you know, and, so, and I, I said, sorry, this is being, you know, I, I explained myself and explained it, but it wasn't terrible, you know, and it's actually not very often that we get comments on the website anyway. So, um, you know, it's fine. It's understandable. But um, it is what it is, you know. I do understand that they're trying to, what they're trying to do with the comments, but like some of the comments did seem legit. I mean, R- Ralph, it didn't seem like there's any sequels to Wreck-It Ralph or anything going on besides that one arcade game from 30 years ago. So it is kind of understandable that what is Ralph doing in all these new kind of things, you know? So yeah. I agree. I wasn't completely, you know, I understood what they're trying to comment on the comments, but I felt like there's like, hmm, I kind of feel a little bit justified on that. This podcast is brought to you by 3D Wiggle. With 3D Wiggle software, you can impress your family and friends with 3D GIFs and videos. To find out more information, please click on the link in the description for 20% off coupon as well. This podcast is also brought to you by Patreon. With Patreon, you can become a patron and get this podcast commercial free and get many more benefits. Please click on the description again to get more information. Now, back to the show. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's your website. Well, I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> the comment on, um, you know, the buzz in the, in the movie about the uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Well, yeah, well, people on the Internet feel like I have a whole lot of courage behind the uh, face. And they just like to tear things down. Very, you notice people don't don't respond to good things. It's usually make things they're unhappy about. So, which is mm-hmm. why one of the reasons I don't really do social media, because why put yourself out there, uh, and you do great stuff, and nobody pays the slightest bit of mind, and you mess up once, and they rip you to shreds. Yeah, and then no. The people that have the loudest microphone are the people that should have it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. So the main solution for this story is done, and that's like halfway through the movie. And then it gets into some really weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> because Penelope is talking to Shank, and she's like, um, yeah, I don't know if I really want to go back to my game. And, yeah, and then Ralph heard it all, and he was like, oh. I need to screw this up because I'm not happy. And then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Penelope, you can't just pick another game and they're going to stay in it. They're going to notice. You know, eventually someone's going to be like, hey, what's going on? There's a glitch in this game. That girl is not there. You can't just add characters to the code and poof, everything's fine. No one notices. No, people are going to notice. And, it, you know, what happens to the people – in her game, you know, it just so, you know, happens that Felix adopted the girl, but like, well, you know. There are 14 racers, so they may not notice unless Penelope was their favorite. So, yeah, that leads to the question. Okay, so if they, if the arcade guy has the unit and fixes it, and then they try to play as Penelope and it doesn't work, won't they still have the out of order sign because of glitch? They you know? might. But those that, girls were so mean to Penelope, you know, they kind of would deserve whatever happened to them. But I just would feel sorry for Fix-It Felix having them all in his house all the time, not without a respite of them going to work and playing their game. Just the thought of them be, those 14 girls being underfoot, oh, man. I don't know, maybe the wife can take them into her battle game. <laughs> and, like, uh... <laughs> Early on, they visit Tron, and they mention there's a glitch and that they shouldn't go into that. But, like, wait, if there's a glitch in that game, why haven't they shut that off? Why, you know, they they made a big deal about the first one saying, oh, if, if the game is glitchy and doesn't work, we're just going to shut you off. So you need to behave in the game. You can't go too out there with it because your home will be gone. Yep. So yep. that's a big plot hole. Yeah, that's why this movie gets a seven. <laughs> it's stuff like that. 
So it's like, okay, okay. Look, I'm totally, I understand why Penelope wants to stay in the game. Totally get that. I understand that she wants to come back here and there. Okay, that's a good compromise. You know, come back during the night whenever the arcade unit is gone. That way, you know, people may know this, but not really. But if she stays there permanently, she's going to really stick out like a sore thumb. You know, she doesn't, it's like, you know, having Luigi go into, you know, Dead Red Redemption 2. Yeah, yeah. he's going to stick out. You're, you're going to mm-hmm. notice him. He's a totally different kind of thing than the super realistic Dead Red Redemption, you know. Yeah. Luigi, and like, if Luigi's riding Yoshi, you're going to be like, what the hell is that doing there? <laughs> yeah. So, it doesn't fit, and it's like, okay, if he wants to do that when no one is playing, okay, that's fine, that's one thing, but like, okay, fine. So then, Ralph is like, alright, I'm gonna go get, a, you know, fix this, and they ask the spammer for help, which I thought was funny, and then the spammer's like, oh yeah, I know a guy, he's gonna, you know, get, um, get you or something, and he gets her on fire risk, and he's like, yeah, you just unleash this, and go find the vulnerability, and, um, then they'll go after the whatever's going on. And I was like, okay. I knew, I knew that was happening after that point. I knew that was going after Vanity because she is a glitch, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, it's weird because, like, I understand they're trying to have a, you know, accept who you are kind of idea. And, you know, a glitch is what she is. But at the same time, it is a fundamental broken aspect of it you know, code, you know. So it's kind of a weird thing, um, to, like embrace the glitchiness of it. Because in a way she has kind of a um um advantage over anyone else that can't glitch, you know? Mhm. But also a dis a but a disadvantage too. Uh like a lot of things that you know, somebody is I mean nobody wants to use the word handicapped any more, um um, what is it, um, handy capable or whatever yeah. they say, uh, there comes, uh, advantage and big disadvantage and this virus can just go right for her. And it wrecks that game. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They, they have to shut it down and like, we don't really know what happens to that game. And it was like, holy crap, Ralph. That was like really, really bad. <laughs> oh, um, that was. This is like all. The, this is like Star Wars fandom bad. This is toxic behavior. This is like going after the last Jedi bad man. Some of the stuff. I mean, that was a bad, bad thing to do. I mean, I don't. If somebody did that in my life, I don't think I could ever forgive them. I'd never be able to trust them again, ever. Yeah, and Penelope legitimately had a good reason to be pissed off. And she, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, no, that is way too far. Like, basically saying, if you're not going to come play with me, I'm going to destroy your house and your everyone that lives in it. <laughs> That's basically the same kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. And, um, mm-hmm. and so, then, of course, it gets loose because this is Ralph. He can't just wreck one little thing. And then it goes he to copies to of Ralph. Mm-hmm. And then it makes copies of him where they start going around wrecking things. And then, um, and then they turn into, like, one gigantic Ralph. And it's like, what the hell am I watching? <laughs> oh, I think it's a little bit of your thing, uh, replicating, um, virus, uh, a little bit of, uh, oh, you know, kind of a transformer type thing, sort of, but a virus instead of a car or a boat. You know, just a bunch of different internet geek culture things kind of, Match to get this movie's a lot of mashup culture, like the psychology of it, which was really out there, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like there was, like I said, they were definitely dealing with talking, you know, existential crisis and all this, and not really explaining it very well. I really feel sorry for uh, 
a, a 12 year old kid watching this part right now. They're going to be just so overwhelmed. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is actually really interesting. Really good commentary on overall culture. And, like, if you're going to go deep into this, then you're going to go into some awesome territory that no one would dare do. And then they don't, but it's still kind of there. It's like, Mm -hmm. and it's just like, okay, so now you have a horde of Ralphs that are trying to destroy everything because they're not happy how things are. And then the Mm -hmm. thing is, destroying everything doesn't make sense because that code couldn't, that virus shouldn't be able to destroy everything. It should Mm -hmm. be, that's another plot hole there that's like, okay, they needed that as a convenience for the story to make it continue to be strong. Mm -hmm. But each each place should have their own code to stop viruses from destroying it, you know. And their version of Google um, should have been fine, and their version of this and that should have been fine. Now, the, how they use Pinterest in this, I thought was hilarious. Mm-hmm. With actually using the pin as a weapon to attack, um, you know, the yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, the solution was that Ralph had to be so comfortable with Vanellope, you know, doing her thing. Just kind of crazy, you know. Well, that was they were the, they were saying that the only way they could stop this was Ralph had to get over his uh, anxiety about Penelope needing something else in life and changing their relationship. Yeah, and that's a really psychological, deep thing for an animated movie. Yeah. And, like, the princesses come back and, like, save the day, and I thought that was awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I said, I don't want another Wreck-It Ralph movie. I want these guys to do a Disney princess movie instead. And, um, you know, you, you get into the whole thing with, you know, just everything's fine now. Um, even the Vanellope's not coming back, but she is going to be happy in their thing. And apparently they said, this kind of like an offhand comment all about it. Oh, yeah, they fixed my glitches, so if I die in that game, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they hacked, which made sense. You know, street gang, they would, of course, the movie trope, they always have a hacker in the group, always. And that was like a big thing in the first movie, that if you die outside of your game, then you don't come back, you know. Mm-hmm. And he just kind of threw that away with the line. It's like, oh. Well, so she's now part of, so I imagine she's now part of that game. Yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> and, you know, you do go back to the racing of the other game, and they're like, okay, everything's fine. And like, they have a funny scene where, like, they explain how we became good parents. Uh, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. They, they use, like, the motors flying by to interrupt things. I thought that was funny. Yeah, so you can't, so the secret of good parenting is lost forever. <laughs> um, and then, you know, okay. And, and credits, and the credits. I love the, one of my favorite bits in the credits was they actually had a scroll bar. So it was like scrolling and there was a little line. It, they had the thing look like a, made the credits look like a browser. I thought it was hysterical. And, let's get to and the then, of course, thing. Mhm. What happens in the mid credits scene? God, I'm trying to remember. Okay. Because um, the end, because so, the end credit is what I really, what really stuck out with me. The rip right. roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the mid credit scene, um, it was actually a scene from the trailer. Um, oh where, yes, the princesses. I can't yeah, well, believe no, no, no. that split my mind. It was the video, it was the kid in the car seat. Oh, playing, yeah, bunny, bunny. Milkshake, um, pancakes yeah. and milkshakes. So, like, the kid, they were playing a game, and the game was, you know, you give pancakes to the bunny and you give milkshakes to the cat. And Ralph was like, let's just keep giving them and keep doing it. And um, the, the, the scene starts off with the kid saying, oh, how, you know, mom asking the kid, how did you like the movie? Which is now a meta joke, 
and they mm-hmm. said, oh, I like it, but then there's not all the scenes from the trailer in the movie, which is a double meta joke, because that yeah. scene is in the trailer, but not in the movie. So then they show that rest of that scene to completion, which is really weird because they, they did ruin that scene in the trailer. <laughs> yes. And, oh, um, I don't know if your screening had it, but my screening, uh, Ralph, since I got to the theater very early because they didn't have reserved seats, they ran movie before the movie, yeah. and they ran the Wreck It Ralph, and you could use your phone and play, uh, you know, Pancake Man and Milkshake Kitty. Oh, okay. Cool. While you were waiting for the movie, so technically now Wreck It Ralph is a video game. So no, this I is a video game movie, <laughs> a real video game movie. I think they eventually released Wreck It Ralph on on phones, but I don't think it's considered that good of an actual game that it's very simple, you know? Um, but, oh, that's a pity. Um, I haven't played it, so I don't know for sure. But like, so then, And I heard Ralph is showing up in Fortnite, but I've never played Fortnite, so... Yeah, there's like a um, billboard with him, and like apparently one viewer, one, some people saw him, but not all people. So he's going different places. So that's why I thought it would be funny to put on the website. That's why we don't have a 3D section, but I guess the joke, you know, didn't work yeah. for our audience. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we get oh, to the... was... Go ahead. There were so many things in this movie. I could... This is definitely rewatchable because I know I didn't catch everything. There were so many things flying by so much. I could probably see this a dozen times and not catch everything. So it's actually yeah, this... funny. Go ahead. Oh, I've finished. Sorry. Um, so the, when I went to see the screening, the, the guys that were doing the screening, you know, usually they have um, some people there that's all right, you know, movie's about to start, or sometimes they'll give you stuff before the movie starts, or they try to crowd control to get everyone seated. Um, and then they actually said, as the movie, the credits start rolling, there's two uh, creep scenes, so just sit tight and you'll see it all. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. I didn't have to look on IMDb or something and see if there was a post-credit scene. So the post-credit scene, I thought was really brilliant. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, an incredible Rick roll. They have this go on screen and it says now a secret a secret a sneak preview for Frozen Two and like kids in the theater were like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were at my screening too squealing and then all and then, of a sudden you hear John C Riley singing <laughs> and all the adults were laughing and the kids were like ah. And I was like, okay, that Rick Wolves is like perfect. That's the perfect way of doing that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a weird movie. It, it's psychological. It is, you know, really against, you know, it breaks the rules of the first movie and like shatters the fourth wall and like doesn't care about the rules at all. And like, you don't know what's going to happen if it's continue this series because like, how do you go from here when there's no rules, there's no nothing holding us back? And I, I do have a problem with that. Like, it does stop it from going to become a great movie. But it's a very, very good movie, you know. And, and those rules, you know, I'm not like a super jerk about rules. I just think that they should at least try to respect what was there because you can just go into madness if you don't have the, you know, established the universe set, you well, know. Either they need to go, uh, need to go full Warner Brothers, uh, cause I don't know how much classic Warner Brothers animation you've seen, but they were big on, here's the rule, now we're gonna break them all. Uh, this kind of felt like, to me, almost like a 90s DreamWorks movie, you know, like Shrek and those, that same cultural stuff and the snarky joke. Damn, you know, I didn't think Disney had it in them. Yeah. I was like, damn. 
it's real bossy. I, I'll give them that. They they really had the balls to do what they needed to do, and the, you know. Uh huh. And, and like I said, like I said in the other podcast, the Batman joke really landed with me. Uh, I think I was the only person who caught it in my screening. Because uh, oh, yeah. that was damn. Because, like I said, a lot of people aren't aware that Fox owns the TV rights to Batman in perpetuity, and now I guess that means Disney does. And, uh, you know, I was still really wanting, you know, Mario, you know, to be in here and other video game characters that are, like, uh-huh. legitimate, you know, like, they don't have to, um, that was one thing I, I kind of critiqued in the first movie, you know, that they jumped into, like, a couple games, but not, like, a lot of games, you know? So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, th- that is kind of something that could be interesting, too. You know, it did feel a little bit rushed. It could have gone in there and, you know, we could have tried out actual Mario Kart, <laughs> you know? And seeing how that would have played, that would have been funny because, in mm-hmm. many ways, her game is a copy of Mario Kart, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, and actually, what I would like to see would be the Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, TV show, really yeah. expand on this. You could have one episode, you know, Penelope decides she wants to play uh, Mario Kart, and another one, uh, Ralph decides uh, he wants to do something. He wants to go surfing on the internet or something. He has to go stuffy Kong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe they go play Smash Brothers and then they actually are fighting each other for one. That would be funny. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would be hysterical. <laughs> and, like, What's going on? and like Smash Brothers mm-hmm. would have been a really good way to kind of get everyone in there, or not everyone, but like almost everyone, because Smash Brothers mm-hmm. represents everything almost in video game culture, and mm-hmm. them fighting each other and like, what's going on? You know. Who knows? Maybe Rick and Rob will actually be in Smash Brothers as a downloadable content. You know, mm-hmm. that would be a great meta joke for Nintendo if they actually did that. Yeah, like, yeah, we're not going to include Mario in, in your game in your movie, but we'll include Smash, mm-hmm. you know, in Smash or something. You know, so yeah, it's still pretty really good. It's still enjoyable. It's out there. It's an out there movie. It's not what I was expecting. It's, in many ways, it was better than I was expecting. You know, mm-hmm. but, you know, they, I do worry the jokes will be weird in a couple of years, you know, but like, what's eBay? What's Pinterest? You know, but I think they did well enough that you can understand it even if, you know, some of the jokes get dated, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, kids, in 10 years, if you're listening to this podcast, just go look it up on Wikipedia, all the stuff while you're watching this. You can scroll and you'll get them and you can read the references. If Wikipedia says this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and it's like the arcade, like six years later, they, first of all, it's kind of a miracle that you have to just assume that arcade still exists because at least where I'm, at least in Texas, the only arcades are Dave and Buster's, basically. Oh, we've got arcades here, but they're like, they're, most of them are bars. Yeah. So it is. Yeah, downstairs they have the video games, and upstairs they have a full bar. And usually you can, they'll let you in the arcade at 18, and you can go, and at 21 to go to the bar. Mm-hmm. And they have the really good video games upstairs. And I'm like, that's dumb. You're going to have the vintage games with a bunch of drunk? I mean, really. And if they could have made commentary in like Japanese arcades, the Japanese mm-hmm. arcades are still really popular. So, you know, having some weird Japanese game in there, they're like, okay, this is out, this, this internet's really weird. There's some, there's some weird games out there, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, I would have liked more commentary on, like, the pay-to-win, you know, kind of um, internet phone games, you know? Yeah. They, they did... You know, that could have been something that they could have talked about a little bit, you know. They did that in the Emoji movie with the stupid, you know, 10-minute scene in Candy Crush. But, you know, th- this feels like the most of the movie done right. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think that's basically it. I think, you have anything else you want to mention? No, oh, I think that's about it. podcast is brought to you by 3D Wiggle. With 3D Wiggle software, you can impress your family and friends with 3D GIFs and videos. To find out more information, please click on the link in the description for 20% off coupon as well. This podcast is also brought to you by Patreon. With Patreon, you can become a patron and get this podcast commercial free and get many more benefits. Please click on the description again to get more information. Now, back to the show. Yeah, this is a so this is a good one. It's well worth checking out. So yeah, um, it's something that I'm interested in. I would, wouldn't be opposed to a third one, but I, I kind of want them to maybe reestablish some of the rules because it, it drives me crazy. Even if it's just one line of dialogue, I could take it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even if they, oh. you know, yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't mind another one of these either. But I would rather. If I had to pick and choose, I'd rather have these Disney princesses in a movie. Yeah. By this team, because this is, this is good. Yeah, and um, it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's uh, something they could really dive into and uh, really chew up. And it's, it has more depth than you would think for a kid cartoon movie, you know? And, you know, the rule breaking is a little annoying to me. I'm not going to let that go because I feel like they could, they could have wrapped things up and said, you know, okay, Ralph, have an extra man and then copy you and the Ralph arcade game still working, you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Where they could copy and paste the characters and, um, into the original game so that way they could do that or maybe they could, um, you know, go into the code and hack it to make Penelope actually in the game and not just a random extra character, you know. It could have been something... Those extra lines of dialogue, you know, I think would have gone a long way to pushing this, you know. Yeah. I also Um, think you're thinking this on a deeper level than they ever went to. Yeah, I'll give you that. But I think they're they're taking it to a deeper level, too. So it's kind of one of those things where... Yeah, you know. it's uh if you go deep, you got to answer the other geek thoughts. That's yeah. the way it works. You know, having a uh, you know crisis of ex, you know where the main character may not exist anymore. <laughs> you yeah, know, gets into some deep levels, and you know the whole idea, like we said before, you know immigrants and coming out of you know games and you know all that integration into other games and other societies. You get some deep stuff in there, so you could dive a little deeper if you're going to go there. You know, but it's, it's all good. It's all good. All right, let's go here. Let me see if anything else. Oh, I think that's finally it. All right, bye. Okay, bye. All right, before this podcast ends, I want to give a thank you to my patrons. Right now, we have a one patron, which is David from Spain, and I want to thank you for your financial support. All right, so that's going to be it for this podcast. We now have a Patreon, and the link is in the description. Uh, thanks for watching. And we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they don't put it everywhere. Just look for us, 3D or 2D. And of course, review us on iTunes. And if you want to write us a letter, our email address is email 3 or 2 d at gmail.com. So that's going to be it. Uh, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone.